about something I found out this year in my rolls. I've had rolls about all my life and flown them and had fair success. Uh, since I got met James Turner and I got some of his birds, my roller performing my performing rolls has really become uh, uh, one of my favorites because I get to fly them every day or every other day. But something I learned this year during the flying season, I want to share with you. I found out something. I thought about it. And uh, I said, well, it might work. And the idea was to not turn my rollers out until sunset. Well, sunset is about 30 minutes before dark. Don't have to be exactly at, at sunset, but it'd be 30 minutes before dark. You want the birds to fly about 20 minutes. So what I started doing is turn them out at sunset. You know, I always feed them after they fly. They go out, they fly. They do their thing, they do their rolling, they come back and they go back in the cage. But let me tell you what I found out. I have not had a hawk attack in, in 2011, even up to now. And the only reason it could be is because of the time of day I'm doing it. And I, I kind of got the idea from the fact I used to do a lot of crow hunting years ago. And something I found out about crows is they would go to roost about an hour before sunset. For whatever reason, I don't know. But you could follow them to the roost. You could watch them flying. It'd all be going to the roost. So that's where I got the idea. And evidently, hawks are the same way. I guess if they didn't get anything to eat, by that time of day, they were in trouble. So anyway, I want you to try it this year and see if it'll help you. But I started out with 13 birds. One of them disappeared right after I started flying. One of them I pulled out of the kit because he wouldn't roll. The rest of them did their job. They came in. They did everything like they were supposed to do, and I had no problems. They never got spooked off by a hawk, which is really worse than a hawk getting them. It's just something that happened. Now, if it was a coincidence, it was a strange coincidence because we had them all the time uh, chasing our yard birds, as we call them. We got some birds that free fly, and they catch one now and then. But anyway, I want you to think about that, and maybe you want to give that a try this season because it's worked for me. And it should work for you. Be interesting to find out. So give me some feedback on that. Okay, before closing, I want to talk to you about this little thing right here, this bean can. You got to have a green bean can to train your rollers. Not really. It could be any kind of can. This is what I use to measure my feed. I start out with about a tablespoon per bird, and then I work it up and down based on what they eat. I don't want to give them a whole lot of food. I feed them once a day. I feed them mainly wheat. Sometimes I have some wheat in Milo. Basically, a roller is just like a model airplane. It'll fly until it runs out of gas. That is another advantage of flying in the late in the afternoon, too. If they want to fly a long time, they don't. They come in early because it's dark. Anyway, get you a feed can. I feed mine. Right now, I got 11. They get about a half, half a can a time. Another thing, they like this noise right here, and they'll, and they'll respond to it. So I hope you enjoyed today's show. We certainly enjoyed doing it, uh, doing it for you and uh, let you share some of this pigeon information because it's a great hobby and we all love it. We're, we're just crazy. We're, pe we're pigeon crazy, I guess is the word. But anyway, I'm Danny Joe Humphrey. Until next month, I'm going to see you. I'm going to be at the Pigeon Loft.